What is good on guys? My name is Kenji, welcome back to the channel. I hope it's not the first time you're watching one of my videos, but just in case it is, I'm a fourth year medical student and biomedical science graduate studying King's College London. And on today's video, we have an assumptions about me video. And the reason why I'm doing this video is because Loki, it is getting quite hard to constantly be coming up with all these uh, YouTube ideas. I've got my final uh, fourth year exams coming up in around three or four weeks as well. So spending time planning our videos, getting ahead along. But also most importantly, and the main reason I'm doing this is because it's actually quite fun. Like, you know, sitting down here, like just kind of chatting to you guys one-on-one, -on -one, uh, sort of, and also just answering all these like really funny assumptions that you guys have is actually gonna be quite fun for me. So I wanna do the typical YouTuber thing and answer all these assumptions that you guys sent me in. I actually put out a little um, sticker tag on my Instagram stories around a week ago, asking you guys what you guys think of me and I'm low-key really interested to find out. So follow me on Instagram if you haven't already, but otherwise let's jump straight into the video. All right, so first assumption from uh, Dana Chitor, sorry if I butchered your name, is man knows his fashion and is always dapper. I mean. Come on, bro. Look at this. Uh, look at this drip right here. You know what I'm saying? Got the Gymshark, Gymshark trousers on as well. But now nah, I'm just joking, man. But low key, I just literally recycle all the clothes I have in my uh, in my cupboard. I actually don't really like shopping, and the majority of my clothes probably cost under ten pounds. This shirt right here that I'm wearing is one of my favorite shirts right now, and this cost me like uh, six pounds on Boohoo, man. So all my clothes are actually hella hella cheap. Um, but I just managed to find like some good cheap clothes which I enjoy uh, wearing. All right, so second assumption by. What Chega is, uh, and it's kind of actually true. The assumption is that you can throw yourself into your work and forget about other important things in your life. Now, I think this is probably true for a lot of medics, like not just me, but I think a lot of medics do sometimes, especially when we have like our exams coming up, can sometimes forget that medicine is not the only thing going on in our life. Um, and the reason why is because we know we have exams so often, we have a lot of you know, things going on, we have placement every single day, but I've actually really been trying like over the last couple of months to maybe like last year to try and focus on other things other than the medicine. So now I really time block my time. Like for example, Wednesdays, which is today, the whole entire Wednesday I do take off from medicine. I might do a bit of medicine here and there, but just to film YouTube videos. And I definitely don't want to be the sort of doctor who only like is good at medicine. Like I want to make sure that I keep my friends uh, around me, my family around me. I want to travel and like still do YouTube and stuff like that. So that is low-key true. This assumption like definitely is true, but it's something I'm trying to work on. And I think it's something that probably a lot of doctors and a lot of medics in general uh, really have to work on. Because medicine is one of those things that can really take over your life unless you really try hard not to. Um, so that is, assumption is semi-true. Trying to work on it. Uh, and I'll update you guys on my progress in a couple of months. All right, so next assumption is you feel old compared to other undergrad med students. Now, I think I'm actually one of the grad students on the course who don't feel old. The reason being is because when I actually started med school, I was 21. So firstly, all the friends I made were graduates anyways, like me. But secondly, I was the youngest, you know, possible age to be a graduate on an undergrad course. You know, a lot of my friends were like 23, 24, 25. Uh, even higher than that but again i literally came from my last degree straight into medicine so a lot of the friends who i made were either graduates and a lot of the undergrads i, I actually met uh, had taken a gap year you know sometimes one or two gap years so a lot of my good you know really really close friends ended up being uh, only like one or two years younger than me and also especially this year this year the majority of our course actually came back from intercalating so they also did like an extra year so everyone i live with is either my age or maybe one maximum two years uh, younger than me and medicine is one of those degrees where it doesn't really like matter your age. And the reason being is obviously because when you finish medicine, you go off to become a doctor. So everyone's like, you know, on different paths. Some people took gap years. Some people uh, did different degrees like me before. Some people intercalated, so did an extra year anyways. Some people were on the six year program. So everyone is like very varied and our ages are all like sort of similar. So, the answer to uh, Michael Nixon is, is I don't actually feel old compared to the undergrads, apart from when nights out, because after night out, the next day I'm like dead. Uh, but apart from nights out, I definitely don't feel old compared to everyone else. All right, so next assumption is you're naturally smart. And this is from Sophie H77. And this is one of those assumptions I can straight away say, definitely not, definitely, definitely not. Uh, if you guys watch my videos on like how I got into medical school, I definitely don't consider myself naturally smart. What I do consider myself, however, is someone who works hard. So if there's like a concept I have to learn or a Exam I have to revise for. I will revise as hard as I possibly can, you know, bang out as much work as I possibly can, and then finally, you know, be able to get good grades. But compared to some of my friends here at med school who like probably revise less than me, but do extremely well in the exams without having revised that much, a lot of them are like naturally smart. I definitely wouldn't consider myself one of those people. I think I just kind of work hard to make up for that gap that I think I, I might have in some in some areas. All right, so next assumption is uh, from I'm Just Addy, and he says Kenji hates being bullied by consultants during uh, clinicals. And 
and that is 100 true to tell you guys a really funny story like the other day i was on um, i was in hospital and i was spending about maybe an hour with this consultant on the ward round and he just was completely ignoring me like not being very friendly clearly did not want me there and as we were walking down the corridor in the ward round i saw like a gap you know like a little door open on the right and as we we're walking down i literally cut right and like never saw this guy again and i just literally ran away i think i'm actually getting better at like running away from doctors who just don't want to teach or who don't want to be friendly um so the simple answer to that is like hella yes uh if you're in med school as well and a doctor's not kind to you just just leave bro like obviously don't get in trouble but if you can leave just leave and save yourself some time man all right so uh next assumption is by mayor mayor shad i think and his assumption is you go hard on nights out But to tell the truth, if you guys see me uh, on, on campus at Guy's Bar on a night out, just come find me. And that's what I'm saying. I'm not going to say anything more than that. I don't want to expose myself too much. Our right, next assumption is by Anjali. And she says, you went to a private slash grammar school. Again, I probably wish I did, uh, but I actually didn't. I went to a very, very, very public school in the UK. Uh, I went to an all boys school. It wasn't a grammar school at all. It was actually just a normal like public school. But what I can definitely say is that a lot of people in medicine are privately educated. It's one of those degrees where a lot, a lot of people come from private schools or at least from grammar schools. They're definitely like a good four or five people um, who I live with who definitely went to private schools, but yeah. That unfortunately wasn't me. The only exception actually was when I lived in Kenya. So when I lived in Kenya uh, before the age of 14, I did go to private school. And the reason being is because schools in Kenya actually aren't free. So the majority of people in Kenya do go to private schools or at least in Nairobi, they do go to private schools, obviously with the prospects of going abroad after to, you know, to study in universities uh, in the UK, for example. Uh, so going to private school in Kenya isn't really like, you know, as special as it is in the UK. Whereas in the UK, there's a really good free public uh, school system. The majority of people do go to public schools. So the only exception was in Kenya. But obviously when I came to the UK, I went straight to public school, very, very normal school. Um, and yeah, that was my schooling. All right, so next assumption is from uh, Lil Rap Face. I love your name, bro, <laughs> Lil Rap Face. But his assumption is you are shorter than six foot. What's actually really funny and really surprising is that whenever I actually meet a subscriber in real life, one of the most common things people say to me is, oh my God, you're actually taller than you seem. And I'm not so sure whether to take that as a, as a compliment or not. Um, but for some reason, people actually think I, I'm short or like on camera for some reason. But yeah, to answer your assumption, I'm actually bang on six foot, which a lot of people are so surprised with. Uh, I'm not so sure why I, feel like I come across short on camera, but nah, I'm, uh, I'm pretty much bang on six foot. All right, next assumption is from Oyinda Debra, and she says, you don't have time for a relationship. And although this is like quite a common assumption, I think of medics in general, like maybe not just me, but uh, I definitely do have time for a relationship. I actually am in a relationship by now. Um, and although, like, I'm not gonna lie, it is quite difficult to balance sometimes. You know, balancing, going to placements, studying for exams, you know, hanging out with your normal friends, hanging out with your family, also balancing a relationship. It can be quite difficult sometimes, you know, not just for me or for medics. Um, and also, like, balancing YouTube, like, trying to find time for all of those things, as well as having a relationship, is actually quite difficult. I'm not gonna lie to you. But I guess the, the sort of tip I can give anyone who's in a relationship and who has a lot going on as well, is to try not to separate like your life from your relationship. I think uh, that's something that a lot of people can do, including myself sometimes, is to try and say, okay, my life is going to be, you know, medicine, and then I have another life, which is a relationship. And what I'm trying to say is that, Sometimes I might say, okay, from Monday to Friday, I will only work. And then, you know, Saturday, Sunday, I'll only see my, my, my girlfriend and do no work at all. That can definitely be quite difficult as a medic. So what I try to do is I try to bring them both together. You know, if um, if I have work to do, I will say to my girlfriend, like, look, I've got a lot of work to do this weekend or during the week. You know, I'd love to see you, like, please come around. We'll watch a movie together, do, you know, Netflix and chill in that. And the night, uh, we'll, you know, obviously cook together and have meals, go on a walk together, do some exercise, go to the gym together. There's a lot of time where you can actually spend together while also still doing the things you do anyways which makes it a lot more enjoyable when you have your partner with you and as well as that obviously you know working throughout the day as well so i will tell her like listen i've got an exam coming up in three weeks i need to revise but we can definitely find time inside our day to spend time with each other you know and of course if she's happy to do that she'll come around well i'll definitely get some work done and i'll also spend time with her and if she's not cool with it and she's you know she'd rather you know go hang out with her friends or anything like no problem whatsoever um but just try not to separate your two lives try to bring them together if you need to revise definitely revise but also find some time in there to also spend with your partner and that's like some, some really good advice that i wish i could tell myself but now, I definitely don't want to be the sort of doctor who doesn't have time for a relationship or like friendships and stuff like that. That's just not me. Uh, yeah, 
on to the next assumption. All right, so the next assumption is by the same person, Oyinda Deborah, and uh, she says, you feel guilty when you're not studying. Now, this is something like I can 100% wholeheartedly say uh, is true. And again, guys, I'm really trying to work on this. It's really, really difficult to work on sometimes, um, but especially like when you've got exams coming up. So obviously now it's April, I've got my exams coming up in uh, May and June as well. And especially during this sort of time of the year, you know, you can definitely feel guilty when you're not uh, studying. If I go to, to like hang out with my friends, you know, go for lunch, whatever, sometimes it can be really difficult to get that out of your mind that you probably should be studying, especially if you live with medics like I do, who, you know, who, who are spending time studying. You can definitely feel guilty in times like that. And that's not a good thing. I think there's such a huge like toxic culture of productivity these days that if you're not, you know, studying, you should be doing your side hustle and like making money on the side as well. Spending time with your friends and your family is, you know, know being seen as lazy I think this is such a culture that's going on in our world right now and it's something I'm really like trying to break out of and I think I'm, I'm, I'm more or less nearly there but it's something I've been trying to work on recently as well it's not being busy for the sake of being busy not multitasking all the time not always like focusing on productivity you know if I feel like I want to spend time with my friends I will actually spend time with my friends and not worry about you know not studying and that's especially important in medicine where you have exams all the time every two months you've got an exam when you're a doctor the exams don't stop you still have loads of exams to sit as a doctor so that's definitely something I'm trying to work on it definitely is true that I do sometimes feel guilty when I'm not studying um, but I'm really trying to work on that man and um, trying to get away from this whole like you know toxic productivity uh, culture that we have going on right now and I can definitely say that's true, but I'm definitely trying to work on that. All right, so next assumption is you have really good genes and don't need to gym as much. Now, I honestly wish this assumption was hella true. Uh, what I can definitely say is that I, I think I have good genes in staying lean. Because staying pretty lean for me is not hard because I'm naturally like very, very skinny. I think I definitely have skinny genetics. And ever since I was like 12, 13, I always had a, like a skinny six pack. And that's unfortunately true. But when it comes to actually like building muscle and go to the gym, I think my body finds that really, really, really hard. Like I really have to force feed myself so much to eat a lot to actually gain muscle. And I've actually been working out for like, since I was 16, so a good nine years now. And I definitely don't look like someone who's been working out for nine years. I actually think I was dealt quite a bad hand when it comes to genetics in terms of like, you know, going gym and stuff. I think where I actually inherited like pretty okay or like pretty good genetics is in, so one, again, being a low body fat percentage and two, playing sports. I've always been quite naturally gifted at like playing sports. I played a lot of football when I was a kid. I played like pretty much every sport. I held a lot of records in my school while I was a kid. So I think I'm more naturally gifted at sports and being lean compared to actually going gym. So shout out to you for making that assumption that, that obviously gasses me but definitely definitely is not true all right so next assumption is from Radha or summit or I miss I think and his assumption is you have a secret girlfriend now semi true so I mean I have said on the channel very many times that I do have a girlfriend so it's not like a, a little secret but obviously she is something that I'm trying to keep away from YouTube the reason being is that this is like YouTube is something that I choose. It's, it's a life that I brought on myself, you know, being in front of, um, you know, hundreds and thousands of people every single month, you know, throughout your videos isn't for everyone. You know, it's something I, I personally chose myself, but it's definitely not for everyone. And I think although like I like being really open with you guys about everything, you know, I really try to show you guys what my life is like, you know, in, in reality, I... <laughs> I think there definitely are some aspects that you can keep secret if you want to. There has to be some sort of boundary and obviously that boundary varies between, you know, people and from person to person. That's something like right now, I, I like to keep separate, you know, to, to my YouTube life, keep them more personal, you know, for me. Um, but maybe when I hit 100K, I might do like, you know, a really big announcement, really big surprise for you guys. So make sure you subscribe and like the video for that announcement soon to come. All right, so next assumption is from uh, Amin but do official and she says or he says uh, you never believed you'd achieve what you achieved I'm um, actually like think about this to be honest with you guys I, 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 I'm quite a positive person when it comes to myself I'm never someone who like thinks of myself negatively and I always do like motivate myself in my head I always do like really think positively about myself and that's something I can definitely like pride on is having that belief and that self-belief myself but I'll be a liar if I said that there definitely were points in my life that I didn't believe I'd get to where I wanted to. And that was definitely, the, you know, when I ended up not getting the grades for medical school at first. It was when I got, you know, I started getting rejections from medical school. And there was a part of me that definitely thought, you know what, becoming a doctor might not actually be a thing. Maybe it's not meant for me. Um, and you guys can go check out my whole entire video on like how I got to medical school and, you know, how I dealt with rejection. But rejection definitely was you know, thing. There definitely was a phase in my life when I was like 20, 21 years old, where I was facing lots of rejection. And that was quite difficult for me. 
I think it was, I think the only exception to what I said about me always being positive and like, you know, always bringing myself up was that period of time where it started to slowly become a reality that I may not achieve, you know, what I achieved. And if I can definitely like, you know, get, have a flash forward to where I am now, you know, when I was in that situation, when I was going through that difficult time in my life, I definitely would not have believed that I would be here now, you know, going into my final year, you know, going to be a doctor in a year from now, having, you know, published articles and like, you know, got a degree on the wall, little flex right there. But I honestly definitely would not have believed it, you know, during that point in my life. You know, although I was always positive about myself, always bringing myself up, um, that was, there definitely was you know, dark points in my life, which, you know, which I definitely went through when I was in my last degree, you know, trying to get my dissertation out of the way, trying to get to med school. And I definitely, during that period of time, would not have believed uh, I would def you know I would have been here at all, and I think you know that that happens with everyone. You know, imposter syndrome happens with absolutely everyone, and I still feel like an imposter. You know, sometimes now as well. Thinking about you know being a doctor in a year from now, who knows where I'll be a year from now? Who knows where I'll be five years from now? And I'm sure if I also like jump forward to five years from now, you know the Kenji five years like from right now, I probably won't believe you know what I would have achieved in five years from now again. Because I think we all have that you know a bit of self doubt in ourselves sometimes. I think we all have a bit of um, imposter syndrome as well. Although I do have that sometimes, I think like I said, I am quite a positive person when it comes to myself and what I believe I could achieve. Um, but yeah, I definitely went through times in my life where. I definitely wouldn't, you know, believe that I would uh, I would be here right now. Talk to you guys right now on YouTube about my life as a medic. Definitely not. All right, so next assumption is from two people and they say, uh, you're part Japanese or are you Japanese? And I've got a few uh, assumptions about this. And as you guys can probably tell from my name, I am Japanese. Um, I say I'm Japanese, but I look Japanese and I'm, I'm, I'm half Japanese by blood, but I'm not very like, like connected to Japan, unfortunately, if that makes sense. Um, I only lived there for around one year, and I do go on holiday maybe every two to three years to see my family in Japan. So I am uh, Japanese by blood, um, but I spend the majority of my life actually growing up in Kenya, which is in East Africa. I spent around uh, like 12 or 13 years in Kenya, and I spent around uh, 10, 12, about 12 years in the UK as well, and around like one year or so in Japan. Uh, so I am Japanese, it's obviously my name. Uh, I definitely look the most Japanese in, you know, in regards to my cultures. Um, but in regards to where I'm from by blood, I'm half Japanese, quarter English and quarter Kenyan. So I'm a bit like racially confused. Um, but that's actually where I am from. All right, so next question is from Natalie and also from Ethan. And they kind of like go hand in hand. Uh, one is you want to live in a warmer place one day. Another one is you want to live in Kenya someday. And although I, I really, really love the UK, like I love London so much and love the UK so much. The one thing I cannot stand, and like let me know in the comments down below if this is you as well. But the one thing I cannot stand is the weather. I, I love the weather from like sort of April, May time to October time, but anything outside that period, I hate it so much. I hate how it gets dark really, really early. So although my career kind of seems like it'll be here for a very long time, and although I probably will end up living in the UK for my, for the, my whole entire life, what I would love to do is to have a house in a warmer place like Kenya, you know, have like a holiday house on, in Kenya where I can work, you know, in the UK and then maybe on my like days off or you know, when I take like, you know, one or two weeks off from work, I can just easily fly to that country and enjoy the warm weather maybe during Christmas time as well, be able to just take some time off during Christmas, during the cold months in the UK and spend some like time in Kenya. I'm not entirely sure if I can live there forever just because of like how my career has kind of developed in the UK and how my life is, is kind of here now. I'm not entirely sure if I can live there forever, like possibly, never say never. I may end up living somewhere else in, in the world. I'm not entirely sure, but like right now what I'm thinking is it would be lovely to, to have a house there and to go as often as I possibly can to Kenya or to another warm country. Um, but definitely right now, I've probably been in the UK for, for quite a long time. So that's uh, that's the answer. All right, so the last assumption I have for you guys here is from Living Fairy Day. And, uh, and they say, you're a shy guy. <laughs> and to answer this question, I think my personality is changing a lot. When I was younger, I definitely was quite shy. Probably before I was like 18, like 17 and like younger than that, I definitely was quite shy and I found it hard to like, you know, get into a group and like randomly talk to people. I feel like now it's different though. I think being a bit older now, I'm definitely not shy. Like I'm definitely not the sort of person to go into a room and not speak to anyone. I think the fact that I have traveled so much in my life, I've lived in different places, I've changed schools so many times. And also as an adult, I've constantly tried to like push myself uh, into like really uncomfortable situations. A good example being in 2019 during summer, I went and joined like a random lab doing research in Taiwan for a whole entire month. 
and I ended up, you know, just throwing myself into a different culture, um, meeting new people, not knowing anyone, and having like, the best time of my life. So I really have tried as an adult to make myself really uncomfortable, put myself in like socially uncomfortable situations, and that really has ended up in me being like not shy at all. So if you ever see me in real life on campus anywhere, definitely come and holler at me and we'll have a nice chat. But that is pretty much it, guys. Thank you so much for sitting here, listening to me, answer all these assumptions about you guys. If you've made it this far in the video, please do me a favor and put an avocado emo emoji down in the comments down below. I think really interesting to see how many people actually sat through this whole entire video just about me answering you know questions for you guys so avocado in the comments down below if you made this far thank you guys so much for watching please make sure you're subscribed with notifications on to always make sure you're up to date whenever i'm uploading give the video a thumbs up if you liked it and i'll see you guys on the next one